Well, let's begin with a short practice. Right. I'm just going to say the element. And when you hear the element, um, practice with the element the way you would. So, tree. the sun and the wind. shines again on the wind. And when you're ready, lifting the gaze open in the eyes. So how did you follow up? Just speak to how did you follow the instruction? What did you do? Visualized. <coughs> yeah. So, so when you heard a tree, what did you do? I visualized the tree and the I just internally felt like I was not lifting the more being the tree. When you heard when? What did you do? I visualized and felt the wind or so and kind of felt like I was swaying. Your breath. Did you do anything with the breath? I kept through the whole thing. I was listening to my breath. Okay, interesting. So you listening over here. Yeah. Okay. And then when you heard sun. I actually looked it up a little bit. I noticed that my head gently took it up, almost as if to feel the sun on me. Okay. Okay. Very nice. Very nice. Begin to now when you're sitting outside, just sitting outside the courtyard for a few moments. Look around, and you'll be the environment will guide you, right? Only you'll have the additional benefit of the tree actually being there. You'll have the additional benefit of actually feeling the breeze, right? And, and that's one of the ways that the practice deepens. You begin to be even more connected to that, not just as an abstract thought or as a pointer, but as a real shared sense of experience. Um, which really is a way of saying a little bit getting out of this head, right? A little bit less so around your thought. So when we start, and this is relevant because it speaks to some of the instruction on the handout for this week, where it's more imagery driven, less words. The doing practice with the tree is to adjust the posture and the way that you used it. The doing practice with the wind is to take one or two or three slower, deeper breaths. And then after you got to three breaths, you shifted naturally to the being practice of being aware of the breath, right? Very nice. The doing practice with the sun is to wish warmth, wish kindness for somebody else. And then we said sun and wind. 
Because the beating practice with the sun is awareness. So when we have the sun out and the wind, it's aware of the breath. And now it's a being practice. The tree and the sun, aware of the body. Tree by itself, the doing practice. So it starts. So let's just take a quick little look. Different form, see what it's like to do a slightly different um, way of maybe keeping it a little closer at hand. So if you would, thank you. Just open for a moment to um, the day two practice. So you'll notice that it's like set the timer for six minutes. And then you look at the, you just look at this, right? And when you see the tree, what are you going to do? Adjust the posture. But there's no sun. It's just the tree. That's why this is our beginning posture. We're not going to spend the whole time trying to drop to keep the posture, right? We're not going to spend the whole time necessarily, we can do this as a relaxation practice, but we're not going to spend the whole time trying to be breathing a certain way, right? At some point in time, the sun comes out. Then it becomes a being practice, being present for the body, being present and aware of the breath. And so here we have it where it goes from the tree, adjusting the posture, to the wind, where taking those slower, deeper breaths, as many as we like, um, but at least one. Three is the sort of standard protocol. We'll get in a little bit to what we do with the clouds, then the sun spreading warm, and then it moves to the, really the rest of the practice which is aware of the body. And this would be an awareness of the body practice. Next to it, it says, you know, image, you know, how would you sketch awareness of the body? And how would we sketch awareness of the body? Well, the basic way would be the sun and the tree. Sun, awareness, tree. When you go outside and you see the sun shining on a tree, there's many creative ways that you can be like, oh, aware of my body. You could see it shining, and the light could be especially on the, the top. You can bring awareness of the sensations of your head, right? You can let that guide you. But sun and tree would be the basic awareness of the body sketch. But you'll draw it any way you choose. Make it yourself in there, however it is. Okay. Um, so what was it like this last week? Uh, practicing. What did you find? You can put those down for a moment. We'll come back to them. Um, well, I I missed the first session, so for me, I think I was just catching up with everyone, and at first I was, I was almost um, very overly aware of trees. I think everyone might have experienced that the first one. <laughs> tree, tree, tree. Um, I, uh, I did use some of your, the, the guided meditation a little bit because it helps me stay in more focus. And then I started incorporating the exercises at the end of my yoga practice. So when we're laying there in Shavasana, mm -hmm. I was doing it, because not all the teachers give you a guided meditation, mm -hmm. so I actually was doing it while I was laying there. Okay. So that was, I still could feel like a tree, even yeah. though I was laying down. Yeah, so yeah. No, what's very nice about that is, you know, in many ways, sometimes if we don't have just a teeny little bit of structure, we just don't do it. So it's really just meant to, like, have just enough structure mm -hmm. to have a little bit of something. By the time we sort of take a moment of the tree and a moment of the wind. We might be now more into that practice, right? Um, but it's really meant to just sort of welcome us, right? Just like you say outside in the courtyard, the trees and the sun and the wind, they're welcoming you to this space. And then it's what do you do in that space? Think about it, get on the phone, be somewhere else, or take a few moments and be there. And that, of course, is up to us. What else did you, what the week like for you? Um, for me, so I changed the times that I was doing it. Because I used to do it for my before bed, so to say. And then I changed it up. I was like, okay, I'm not gonna follow up a time routine like this week. I'm just gonna like do it, wanna do it. And then I found that, that I, maybe I was used to the bed, so like I was restless more, my mind was wandering more and I felt it and I like I thought I was noticing it more too. I was like, oh that's a thought, that's a thought. <laughs> <laughs> that's a thought. Um, that's a thought. Yeah, I also like once it hit like the fifth minute, I was like <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I had a little trouble with the time expanding, but it, it felt like nice. Okay, good. So a couple of things. First of all, a reminder. You decide for yourself the time that feels right. If when our four weeks are over, you have a daily practice of three minutes, 
where you allow the elements to sort of guide you for that first 45 seconds and then you sit for two minutes and 15 seconds and you're aware of the breath or aware of the body and, and you have a three minute practice. I would call that, I don't like to even use big words like this, major success. Five minutes, six minutes, nine minutes, 10 minutes, 12 minutes. It doesn't, that, that, it, it, that's almost a secondary consideration. So we're sort of we're sort of exploring this daily deepening because so often we know we can be on the internet for hours. We can watch Netflix for hours. We can we can talk with somebody. You know, six minutes is nothing. But when we just sort of create the space, to, right? And so part of this is just sort of stepping into it, and also sometimes when we find ourselves getting a little restless. What might we do at that moment, drawing upon the elements to help ground us a little bit? What might we do? So yes, the feeling of restlessness or boredom or that would be a cloud, the feeling. The actual place in the body where if you start paying attention, you notice it. The breathing's a little shallow, the breath, the wind, there's not as much wind blowing. You notice that, right? Or there's a tension, that would be the tree. So you really, this is why when we say I'm going to pay attention, sun and tree, and I'm going to sit as one practice is one day, to just sit with awareness of the body, just noticing. We want to sort of develop a little bit more staying power, to have the body feel a little antsy, a little tension, a little tightness, just be like, stay with it, right? I did notice I would slouch. Okay, right. It was minute six, and I would do it. Like the tree would like slouch. <laughs> <laughs> right. So good. So that's that's what I was interested in, in in exploring. So if you find yourself in the middle of a practice, whether it's however far into the practice you are, getting a little bit lost, distracted, restless, you can say, "Wait, look, okay, back to the tree. Back to the breath." Because those beginning doing practices of adjusting the posture, whatever way you may adjust it the breath, and I'll get to the cloud in a moment, they are in the service of steadying us, stabilizing us, recalibrating us, so then we can be a little bit more attentive to the agitation in the mind or in the body, because we're a little bit calmer. So when we find ourselves in rest, let's come back to the elements and start again. And start like brand new? Yeah, so start. Yes, absolutely. Start brand new. It would be like listening to a guy at practice where in the middle the person says, aware of your body. Aware of the next three breaths. Continuing to pay attention to what's arising in the moment. And then you're back where you were. But, so here you are sort of noticing. And while I think it's useful, as we talked about last week, to stay with that discomfort for a few moments, then there can always just be that simple because the posture usually will have waned and it's good to readjust, et cetera, et cetera. Very nice. Um, like I was saying before, like the breathing, I like it, like focusing on it during meditation because it really grounds me. And it keeps me focused. And sometimes when I have distractions, I'll start counting my breaths like one number in and then the next number out. And then I know when I'm distracted because I have a number of that. But, you know, <laughs> and then, you know, we go back and start again with one. And so I, I felt more connected to the sure. Okay, very nice. Um, and I also picked up on the daily, just, you know, in the moment. Like I was sitting outside having lunch in the room. Very nice, mm -hmm. right. And then what do we do in that moment with them? and or be aware of the breath that you happen to be taking. Because right. whatever it is, whatever you do, you can't do it wrong. You just woke it up. Like right. that, exactly. that wind woke you up. Yeah. And then what you do with it, if you find that I'm so anxious in that moment, you can be like, I've, I've got some stuff to do with, and it could just be you're talking with somebody, and you're just like, and then you all of a sudden become, oh my God, I'm here with a friend, yeah, and we're yeah. talking, and a beautiful day, and just a little gratitude begins to fill, just with that awareness. So the nice thing, or what's intended is, is you then draw upon the elements the ways that you choose. Okay. Um, I have a question. Yeah. Regarding the staying with the discomfort in the moment, mm -hmm. what should you do? Like how long? Like you always say, well you should, what if we stay with this uncomfortable feeling for a few moments? But how is that defined? Like how many moments is a few moments? And in that moment, should we be using like 
the example you just gave of drawing upon the elements and maybe would that be a means of escaping the discomfort or you know the reason one of the reasons why we stay in the discomfort a little longer is so that we can have greater clarity as to why we're actually uncomfortable. It could be that it's just a momentary wave of restlessness that literally would pass in 30 seconds if we actually sat for 30 seconds. But it would be gone. It's like a little tremor in the body, gone. It could be that by sitting and paying attention and noticing, all of a sudden we become aware maybe that we're holding our belly in, and so we sort of release it a little bit, the wind, a little more full, and we begin just to feel. So there's just a little bit of an adjustment through the elements, sort of waking us, you know, sort of toning down a little bit of agitation. It could also be that we're having a thought about something tomorrow that we're not even aware we're having, clouds. And then we become aware, we go, oh, there I go. Let me come back. And we've stopped feeding that story. But we wouldn't necessarily know that the story was even there, or that by realizing that the story was there, we could sort of gently bring ourselves back. Sun, that was sun with clouds getting in the way, right? And when those clouds got in the way, the tree got antsy, the breathing got shallow, all the elements began to shift. But with that awareness, the sun, which is ultimately, of course, you, it sort of heats, you know, sort of burns through the cloud, if you will, and now there's back to that awareness of wherever you were placing it, the body or the breath. Uh, so, we want to stay with it, not for a certain amount of time necessarily, or not, but to sort of just see a little more clearly and feel a little more clearly what's actually happening, and then to use your own judgment. But usually we can, you know, if in that moment somebody were to just like start talking to you, you'd be like, oh, blah, 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 you'd be fine. But if they didn't, you'd be like, uh. so. I got a question I had during one of the practices this week, because like, for example, like, I, it was, it was a stressful day and I was having like, you know, obviously not the clearest of thoughts because I was upset. And then at one point I realized I'm upset. Yes. And then I like I the mindfulness practice came in because I was like, oh these are clouds. And these clouds are the source of my upsetness right now. Yes. And then like I came back but I was like, would that count as me leaving the uncomfortable moment? Or would no, that No, that's actually a very elevating practice, which is being aware of that's the sun on the clouds. I wasn't sure if just to like stay in the uncomfortable thought for a while until it passes well, away, or to like, well, that's a thought. We can explore this later on or another time. To stay with the uncomfortable thought, if by that what we mean is to stay with the experience, and just to stay with that experience and to feel it and know it more deeply, that's one thing. If to stay with the uncomfortable thought means to keep thinking it and feeling more and more caught by it, that would not be staying with the thought. That would be getting lost in the thought. Um, but t what tends to happen is when we feel agitated, let's come back to the breath of the body, because it's easier to do that to reestablish that steadier state than it is to stay with the thought. But in time, we want to be able to go, okay, tomorrow there's a thing, and I may get bad news, and can I, there's my breathing, there's my body, can I sort of be with this discomfort and then not knowing? And that's actually keeping the light on the clouds. But that, we'll get there. And there's one day we will practice that. Since you have to leave shortly, Let's do I have like we have like five yeah, minutes? Yeah. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about three things. One, I'm going to show you a moving practice so that you see it. There'll be a video that I'll put up. We'll do it more together before we close, but I just want you to see it. Where we take the four elements and we have a little movement that we do as a as a possible also way of starting the practice or coming back to the practice. Um, we'll talk about sort of we'll go through the day so we can see what's going on here, but also the clouds. So we talked about the clouds metaphorically as thoughts. We didn't get to the doing practice. What do we do when we see a cloud? Like what we do when we see a tree or the sun or the, um, the wind. I'm sharing this with you so for you to choose how and when to incorporate this. Just like you can say, I saw all these trees, they got to be every moment. If you take this too seriously, it can be, it can get in the way. But if you sort of figure this out the right way for you, I think it'll be very informative, very insightful. Clouds, because they're thoughts and feelings, have this as the doing practice and it's in here. When you see a cloud or you bring to mind a cloud, you think to yourself the thought, this is a thought. So take a moment right now and you think in your head, hear yourself in your head, hear yourself in your head 
Like you could probably hear yourself say, my name is Scott, my name is Bo, my name is Liv, my name is Josh. You could probably hear yourself say that, yes? But here you're hearing yourself say, this is a thought. Now there's many layers of depth to that. Um, you could hear yourself say, this is not a thought. Right? Now what's interesting about that? It's a thought. So it's not true, is it? If you have the thought, this is not a thought. We have thoughts all the time that aren't true. So here we're saying, let me bring to mind a thought on purpose. Okay, so that's the first part. Then we smile, and we feel maybe a little bit of an uplift, and time will feel it more and more, but just the, the intention is not to feel good. The intention is to notice the feeling. And then we have the thought, if you will, and we feel, this is a feeling. So it's a good feeling as a general rule. And then we frown, and we bring to mind this is a feeling. So we're not like making it good or bad, it's just a feeling. One happens to be pleasant, one happens to be a little unpleasant, and the first is a thought. So the doing practice with the clouds is to actually, rather than go through our day having thoughts and feelings and bouncing around, we at least take a moment where we say, let me get a handle on these thoughts and feelings. And we hear ourselves say, this is a thought, it comes and it goes. We hear ourselves, we feel a happy feeling for a little bit and it comes and goes, and then we feel a not so happy feeling, I'm slightly unpleasant, perhaps, slightly, and it comes and goes. And, it's a, it, and you'll see for yourself how that plays out, but that's the doing practice with the class. Okay. Secondly, the elements. So here's another way to start. We first adjust the posture. We then deliberately stretch and release the fingers. We stretch, and then we come back. That would be a way to start the tree, right? That would be the posture. So rather than just do this, there's a little bit more of an engagement. Right. Next, and you can do it as slow and take as long as you want. It can be very helpful. This is a mindful movement. You are aware. That's a practice. Slowing things down, paying more attention, and it can be very soothing to do that. So that's the trick. The um, the breath to so do this. We come out, we inhale, we come back, we exhale. We come out, we inhale, we exhale. And you can feel your fingers, perhaps tingling, or you just feel them, but we're sort of adding a little bit of movement around the breath. This can be helpful for slowing it down. And this can also be helpful for, for restless and bored, so a little bit more action. So we experiment with that. So that's, again, it could be adjust the posture, take the three breaths, right? Then with the um, waves, the, the, the clouds are this. Okay, time-wise? The clouds are this. You do this. So it's like you've got these two clouds in front of you. And you come to the right slowly, the clouds drifting in front of you. And then when you get to the side, you change your hands, and you go in the other direction. Relatively slow. Right there. And then when you get to the end, you switch them. And what you're doing is, is you're turning your torso, so you're sort of just staying focused at, in the point in the same direction, but your torso is turning as you follow, you follow the clouds coming and going. Okay, so that's the clouds. That's thought. And here's what we do um, to really sort of engage it. First, we just do it the first time. So go ahead and follow me, but I'm going to go a little quicker this time because of Josh. And then we come. After we do it once, we then think to ourselves, it's almost like this is a cloud at the thought level. And we almost hear or know that on here is this word, this is a thought. And we sort of think it, but we almost like plant it on that cloud as we move. And then by the time we get to the end and we sort of and we come back, it's gone. Because thoughts come and go. We might even remind ourselves of that. Then as we come up again, we now smile, and it's almost like we can sense a smiley face on that cloud, right? come across, and we're feeling the whatever of the smile, but then when we get to the end, we let go of the smile, we come back to our regular face, and as we come back, feelings come and go. Because how many times this morning have you to say, you've been happy, moments of happy, and then the next moment. And then we frown, and we feel it, really it's just feeling that feeling, and then we come down, and we let go of our, our frown, feelings come and go. 
And this is a reminder, and then we close with one last time, where we just have this, everything is coming and going. Though we took a few moments to zero in on the thoughts and the feelings, because, okay, so that would be that practice. And then we close with, we come up, the sun coming up, make red will be happy, right? And then we come back, the sun coming up, May I be happy, because we're coming towards me, and then we come up as we close it, with may all beings be happy, right? And then we just sort of come back like this, and then we, and we're ready to most have the sun on the body, if we want to do a body awareness practice, or the sun on the breath, and that becomes the rest of the practice. So this is just setting us up to be a little bit calmer, or a little bit more at ease, a little bit, you know, whatever. And we do it for as much or as little as we need, perhaps. And it also takes about three minutes. So if you're going to sit for six or seven minutes, half of it is just this. And, and if we're aware while we're doing that, it is a mindfulness practice from the very, very beginning. OK. You ready to go? All right, my friend. Thank you. So I'll have a little video. I'll, I'll put it up of what it is that we talk about so you can get the instructions. Thank right. you. Absolutely. Thank you. So let's go through the, the workbook. Or the, the, for this week. Week three. So first, what do you see on the cover? The sun, the wind, and the trees. The sun, the wind, and the trees. Okay. And you know, sometimes when you're sitting outside, you might have it where you realize, okay, you're sitting like a tree. You're breathing like the wind blowing on a tree. And you're aware that you're sitting and you're breathing. And um, you could see a tree flowing with the wind under the sun. And just to sense the connectedness, right? But what's important is not whether or not there's a connectedness and whatever might be some quality there, but that you're more aware of yourself in that moment and being aware of who doing that. Right? Okay. So, um, if we turn to a deeper dive in the clouds, we have a, a little bit of a, to sort of elaborate on what you already nicely spoke to about the clouds. So a little bit more of a reminder about the clouds representing thoughts and feelings, that they come and go, they arise and they pass away. That's why that movement practice is helpful, because we don't just know it, we're like experiencing it. Right. What a category. Hmm? Like, when have you sat down and like categorized like, these are the thoughts and how do you do it? Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, well, well, you're getting to where we're going. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice. And so there's a little bit of something to read just to sort of deepen our connection perhaps to the insights. But then here on the left hand side, what are some thoughts that arise from time to time that may not be entirely accurate? Okay? So this is meant to be something that you maybe even fill in over the course of the week. But for example, I could be sitting, doing a practice, and I might have this thought, nothing I do ever pleases her, right? And if I'm aware of that thought, then I'm aware that, that that's probably not true, right? That's a belief I have. So that could be a good one. That I become aware of while I'm just sitting, it just comes to me from nowhere. Or you could be at work where you could be with somebody. And you could. And what we want to do is be increasingly aware of the thoughts, the clouds coming and going. And sometimes they're true and useful, and sometimes they're not. And it's good to be able to notice them and maybe be more skillful with them. So even when you said before it was a challenging day and you were having these, you know, these, and you realized they were thoughts, that you know, there was a lot of anxiousness or whatever it was that you were feeling accompanying them, to investigate them. Like, what are these thoughts? Is this even true? I'll never get this done. I'm going to get fired. Or, you know, maybe not. Whatever that thoughts may be. Um, and then on the right hand side, what are some pleasant feelings that arise from time to time? And then what are some unpleasant feelings? And this is meant not to, this is just meant to better get a, a feel for the landscape of our own clouds. Can we see clearly our own clouds? So you might think about things and go, oh yeah, I just know because I have that thought all the time. Or it might be that this comes to you during the week while you're sitting. So you realize, that's not true. Okay. Then we have the doing practice with clouds. 
And this is where what I shared is sort of a reminder of. Doing practice with clouds. This is a thought, the feeling of happy or pleasant, the feeling of unpleasant, and then it tells you, and um, that's a reminder of what to do. Now, I think that, as I said, from time to time do it. Not necessarily every time. It's useful, I think, to, to check in with our thoughts and to just sort of wake up to what we're thinking and sometimes to say this is a thought is a way of doing that. Like sometimes you might have it where you're sitting in the morning or in the afternoon or in the evening and you get to the cloud part because you imagine the tree and then you imagine the wind and then you imagine cloud and then you sort of get to the sun. And when you're imagining the clouds, you, 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 you hear yourself say, this is a thought. And then all of a sudden you realize that you're having a conversation in your head with somebody from earlier in the day. You weren't even aware you were having that conversation. But when you say this is a thought, you become more aware of the thought you're having, and all of a sudden it sort of interrupts that thought. And you, that's where this, I think, can become useful. But every time you sit, you don't have to. Um, if it feels tedious, then that would not be the objective of drawing upon the element. Okay. Um, and then the question is at the bottom, what do you think is the being practice with clouds? So what's the being practice with clouds? Yeah, to, to just sort of, right, just to, to not run from it, to not do something in addition to it, but just to notice that that thought is there. Then in the next moment you may come back to your breath. But the being practice is to be aware of um, thoughts. So if you're sitting outside or you're walking and you see the clouds, you could do the doing practice of saying this is a thought, this is a feeling, this is a But you could also just be like, I do what I'm thinking. Right? And that would be the being practice for the clouds. So, question. Yeah. So the being practice of clouds. Uh, I'm trying to think of example, I guess, so that's how I understand things more clearly. Um, what came to mind that I wanted to ask if it would be the correct scenario as a being practice of a cloud. Like for example, um, in my job, I'm the social media director for the college, so I'm all constantly on social media, which means I'm constantly seeing maybe news that I don't exactly want to see from different outlets and stuff. And uh, let's say, for example, you see a news article on uh, someone who lost their grandmother or something, and you think, oh my god, you know, what if I lose my grandmother? Would, like, would, be, would the being practice be understanding that the what if I lose my grandmother is a thought, and then staying with that for a few moments, and then just coming back to the breath? Okay, like you, have a deep, you have a deep connection to this. So let's say with, I'll try to answer it by sort of showing a before mindfulness or without mindfulness and with mindfulness. And I think the answer is yes to what you just said, but with a little bit of you know, further elaboration that would be maybe useful. So without mindfulness, without awareness, we, as we all tend to do from time to time anyway, and many people do much of the time, I would imagine, you're watching the news or whatever, you read about the sad event with the grandmother, and then even though a moment earlier you weren't thinking about your grandmother, you could have easily gone a whole day without thinking about your grandmother, or at least thinking about her in a way that's agitating. Um, now all of a sudden, okay, clouds start to have content. Um, and the content is, oh my god, what if that happens to my grandmother? What if I lose my grandmother? Okay. Now the clouds are getting a little bit more foreboding, right? And then because we're lost now in that cloud, there's all these other clouds going on, there's all this other stuff going on, but those are the ones that we're focusing on. Then we start thinking, um, what, would be an, uh, what would be another thought that you would have about that? That would only make it more challenging. Let's say, you know, I live with my grandmother. Where am I going to live? Who's right. going to support me? Where am I going to live? Who, exactly. So what? that's getting lost Correct. In the storm. Correct. None of that, here's the thing, none of that is useful in all likelihood. And it's all purely a product of having been emotionally triggered as you astutely noted, by this thing that you saw that you almost wish you didn't have to be spending all day watching anyway. So there's like a million moments like this that can come along. Okay. So without mindfulness, the clouds just get darker and darker, and then it starts lightning and thundering and raining, and before you know it, you're like looking for backup plans, you're, call, you're find, trying to find out how healthy your grandmother is, you know, it's like, who knows what you're doing? And it's all like insanity. Okay. With awareness, 
oh my god, what if that happened to my grandmother? Ah, okay, there my mind goes. Now, the moment it happens, we can't help but have it where the tree begins to shake and the wind begins to get more shallow, right? Can't help but happen. But this is why we're practicing paying attention to the shaking tree and staying with it. Paying attention to the shallower breath and just noticing the breathing. Because first, if we're aware that we're just that we're having a thought, so let me come back. We have a safe place. We have like a a, a refuge in, in the middle of the storm. And by not feeding the thought lost in it and and finding a steadier place, what we tend to find is this: those that that thought taking on a life of its own is not only unnecessary, but it won't even happen or it won't linger as long as it would otherwise if we spend take our attention and bring it back to the body. But to be able to say, I'm feeling antsy, like this thought is having me feel antsy, well, mindfulness is being aware of what we're experiencing. So to notice the antsiness, heart rate going up, tension, tightness, that's sun on the tree. And we're practicing the sun and the tree, aware of the body as we breathe, or aware of the breath, because that changes our experience. We come back to the moment that actually is happening, not pulled away. So you said, do we notice it and stay with it or come back? It's sort of a process of noticing and finding us more steadier place and placing our attention. And it's all one mindfulness. It's all part of that mindfulness flow. But we don't necessarily want to stay with it. But we don't want to run from it. We just want to say, let me, because in that moment, you're breathing. You're just not as aware. In that moment, your body's having some sensations. You're just not as aware. And we're recalibrating how, how we're paying attention in that moment. And what often happens is, is the thing that it's almost like it, it kind of goes away. But, but whatever it is, we find out for ourselves. But it tends to change the experience. Yeah? Sure. Yeah. Okay. So I think I'm also, um, so within time, it will help. Like, like almost like, let's say, for example, so I, many years ago, I was trapped in an elevator a few times. And I still have to go in the elevator every day where I live. And I got stuck yesterday for a moment. And then I started noticing mm -hmm. how I was feeling. And I remember that I'd been stuck a couple days before, and all I had to do was hit, I'm hitting the button, because I remember I had to hit the button to open the doors. And I'm hitting it, and it's not happening, it's not happening, I'm getting more nervous, more nervous. And I start breathing, and I slow it down, and I look, I was hitting the close button, yes. instead of the open button. And I actually, then I got off the elevator, and I wasn't as upset as I normally yes. would be. I did eventually a little bit of that, the shape, now, the body just was trying to expel the experience. Mm -hmm. So with, are you saying so then with time, this will help ease situations like that? Like, your reaction, the reaction will lessen, or it will uh, transform? Well, a couple of things. First, it sounds to me like you handled that pretty well. Um, there's two things you said that I think are very, very important. Uh, among many things that you said are important, but two things jump out. One is, because you were caught in a little bit of fear and worry, the clouds, they came, right? You were in the elevator, you might have been a little bit just elevator wary, but in the back of your mind, then the thing that you worry about happens, happen. Clouds start to come, yeah. okay? Um, the awareness, the sun, sort of gone, right? Clouds are just sort of covering it. Now, there's always a little bit of awareness. That's why you can always sort of notice that that's happening, and then, Take a few moments to bring awareness to the breath. The things that you might do or might have already might have done a little bit to sort of not feed. Oh my God, what's going to happen? And then before you know, it, you know, a real panic attack. So one, we don't see clearly in those moments. And your story is a beautiful description of actually not seeing clearly. The button is right in front of you. It says close. Another one says open, and we're pushing the wrong one. That's like a great story for what we do so often when we let the thoughts and feelings hijack, right? Okay. So one is we realize, as you did, oh my God, I wasn't seeing clearly, and now I am. 
pushing the right one. And then you also said, which I thought was really brilliant, was you said, I began to feel a little bit better. It's like you didn't say, I, feel, I just felt instantly better. I felt a little bit more at ease. And that's what this practice is, a little bit more. So first, I wouldn't discount the way you were mindfully aware to some extent, and that helped you in that moment. You could have been pushing clothes a lot longer than you did, right? Could have gone lots of different ways. Uh, but yes, I think that in that situation, if I were in that situation or a situation like that, when you begin to feel that anxiousness, um, the tree is shaking, the wind is shallow, that is to say our breathing is like this and the body is like this, the thoughts are like, oh no, worst case scenario, the feelings are accompanying it, and the mindfulness practice would be to realize that all that's happening and to then say, okay, body, and take a few moments and okay, breath, and really to be aware, more than trying to slow it down, even though you can try a little bit to slow it down, take three slower breaths, that could be helpful, it's more just kind of be aware, and in that awareness of that panel in front of you begins to clarify a little bit. So yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so. Okay. Turning to, hmm? So thank you to Gretel for uh, bringing, bringing her question I, forward. That's the first helped. thing, ever since your first workshop, that's the thing that like stuck out to me the most, and it was my most, like, I, was, I, I didn't know, you know that I came here at the beginning. And then when you started articulating, maybe you weren't giving real world examples, but I was putting myself mm -hmm. in those real world examples, and I was like, wow, there's a wealth of knowledge here. That Good, good. And what I love is that you're finding your way, right? That's yeah. the best way. So, you know, next time you go to the elevator, as you're walking towards your elevator train, even as you're walking towards it, sun on body, aware of, you should know as you're walking, right? Aware of the breath, just to be more aware of what probably will be just an easy ride, but um, there's a lot to pay attention to. I'm going to try. Do you know it's attention as I Yes, I know, exactly. Well, that's, that's the... Okay, so then, day one, putting it all together. So now we see the tree and the wind and the sun and the clouds. So here's, here's how this works. Set the timer for five minutes, or however many minutes you choose. By now, you should set it for three minutes. You should set it for what you want. But this is the, this is the suggestion. We work our way to around 10 or 11. And then you see the tree. Bring to mind, see a tree, and adjust your posture. You see the wind. So bring to mind, see the wind, and take three breaths. You see the cloud, think this is a thought, do the smile, do the frown, right? This is, a, this is a feeling, this is a feeling. Sun, spread warmth. And then you see how it says tree, little tree or little wind. You choose, do you like, like Josh would choose probably the wind. He likes to pay attention to the breath. But you then, now that the sun is out, you rest your attention on, now it's a being practice, being with the breath or being with the body, whatever you choose, okay. And then the little reminder, if you notice that the cloud comes over the sun, you just bring your attention back, okay? So we do that for five minutes. Uh, here on the side, you just you know, sketch the little elements together. At the bottom now, let's take a moment. You'll see the little tip. It says, if there is an element with which you have a particularly strong connection, that can be your go-to element. Do you have a go-to element? When? When? Do you have a go-to element? Three. So you write that down, and it can change, but here's the idea. When we're outside now, the punctuated practice is to do the so be mindful flow. And the flow is to take the element and move from doing to being, and take all of two breaths. So you see the tree, you adjust your posture, and then you do what? Do you continue with the rest? No, 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 oh. we're just sitting with the tree. You adjust your posture. And then you bring awareness to the body, to the body, correct. Or if yours is the when, you then take one or two or three slow, deeper breaths, and then you notice, how to notice the breath. Notice the sensations of the breath, right? First it's when, and then it's sun and when, so to speak. If it's the clouds, you think the thought, feel the feeling, and then you just observe the activity of the mind. It's like you shine, you're sort of like, you're, yeah. And then the sun, you spread warm, and then you just look around and notice what's going on around you, you're just aware, right? 
We're just aware of everything, not necessarily the breath or the body or the thoughts, but just look around, like, oh, there's people, whatever, maybe there's a bird. Um, so here we're saying now the punctuated practice, and again, you can go on to the next one, right? I mean, I, it's hard to bring awareness to the body, to the tree, and not have the breath come along. But the idea is to start somewhere. So if you have a go-to element, because sometimes what will happen is you'll be outside, maybe you'll just have it where you get frustrated by something, or you'll have a thought. So it's like, okay, go-to element. There's the tree, or there's the wind. And you wait, you wait, you feel it. Because that sort of, if, even if you wait to feel the breath, you're like, go-to element's the wind. So let me, uh, and you sort of have to pay attention even to feel it, let alone then to do the doing the big breaths. Okay. Um, then on the next one, you'll notice that there's no longer words. So the idea is to sit with this in the morning or to just do it because you, you've already got it, but like tree, adjust the posture in whatever ways that you may choose. And I do encourage in the morning when you're sitting to really see you've woken up maybe, if it's earlier in the day, you're getting ready for bed, if it's later in the day, but to just sort of not, to go slow, but to, and we'll close with that when we do it, um, those different movements. So you've got the tree, you've got the wind, you've got the clouds, you've got the sun, and then you've got the sun and the tree because this will be the way you spend the rest of your time with awareness of your body. And that's an awareness of the body practice. You can focus on a particular part of the body if you want, or you can just stay aware of the body as you breathe. Then the next day, very similar, because now you've got it all. You've already gotten pretty much every, you've gotten every primary element. We're going to learn two more secondary elements. For seven minutes, same thing, but what are we now paying attention to after we do the doing practices? Mm -hmm. So now we're just sitting with awareness of the breath to practice that. You see, during the day, our breath becomes shallow. We don't usually realize it. If we realize our breath was shallow, rather than getting lost in the story, we'd be like, and we sort of take care of the thing that's actually, you know, feeling, you know, the part of us, we, we, we take care of our breath. We, we recalibrate our breath instead of just getting lost in the story. But we're not paying attention to the breath. We're paying attention to the story. So if we practice paying attention to the breath, we get to know it better. And if you sit for six or seven or ten minutes paying attention to the breath, you'll have thoughts about something later in the day or some argument you had. And your breath, breath will change when you have that thought. And you'll be aware of the thought sooner or later. You'll be aware of the breath sooner or later. And you really get to know... Exactly. And then when you're late in the day and something happens and your breath becomes a little shallower, you're like, ah. And you sort of wake up to that as opposed to getting lost in it. So that's why we practice paying attention. Then on the next day, okay, secondary element. Are we okay if we go about five or so minutes over? Okay. Secondary element. So now we have a secondary element. You've learned the primary elements. The tree, the wind, the clouds, and the sun. The bird. So a bird represents listening. When a bird is nearby, it is common to hear its song. And a natural response to bird song is to listen, almost to listen with delight. Reflect on hearing birds chirping in the early morning or when you are out in nature. Hearing bird song is often a delightful, even treasured experience. The sound awakens us naturally to the beauty of its sound. Right? We're not trying to enjoy the experience. We're not trying to be aware. It just happens. We simply wake up. Importantly, we are not trying to listen. We are not trying to figure out what the bird is saying, as that would only get in the way. We simply wake up to the arising of sound. So, when we see a bird or hear a bird, it's our reminder, our punctuated practice is to Could be that we're talking to somebody and the bird flies by. I'm like, oh yeah, thank you. We realize we weren't even paying attention to that person. Not listen to the bird sound. Just like listen. If the bird is nearby and you're outside, you might want to say listen to the bird sound. But it's a reminder to just listen. Um, so on the left side, you know, can what can you listen to that is outside? So this is a little reminder just to write down. So what are some things that you can listen to if you're outside and you hear a bird? The bird flies away. I was looking at the inside one, and like as I'm reading it, I was like, I hear a clock that okay. I hadn't heard before. Okay, right. Okay, so that, that clock would be outside. That's an outside. Oh. Yeah, it, it doesn't mean inside the house or outside the house. Oh. Yeah, very good. I'm glad, oh, I'm glad you said that. I'll clarify that. Right, so the clock would be something you could listen to 
outside. You know, it's one thing to be lost and worry about something, and then let's just say, imagine you see a bird outside, and you're like, you start listening to the clock? The cloud. You know, if it's a really important cloud, it's not going away. But if it's just a random, you saw something, or reminded you of something, the cloud just sort of comes out of nowhere, if you can direct your attention, not, not force it to go away, but just attend to what you want to attend to, it tends to lose its momentum because we're not feeding it. Okay, so good, we can listen to the clock, but you can write that down. What else do you listen to that's, in, that's outside, that's around us? There's so much. Right. It leads to the sound of your sweater brushing yeah. on a chair. Or yeah. or yes, it right. Just, yes, right. There's so much. Okay, so we're not going to be lost for what to, what to listen to. Now, what can we listen to that's on the inside of us? Is it thoughts? Okay, so we can actually listen to a thought. Okay. Like, can we listen to my stomach growling? We can listen, <laughs> we can listen, <laughs> some, some, right, we can listen to our body. Right, that would be listening to our body. But if we listen to thoughts, the way you said that, that's very much like thinking in our head, this is a thought. You really almost hear it. Right? It's interesting, you take something that's so abstract and we miss and to actually have it have some substance. Then you can work with it. Right? So yes, we can listen to our thoughts. We can listen to our body. And that's something you can think about. There's, ways, there's many ways to respond to this. Would there be a category for things we're not aware that we're listening to? Like advertisements, things that... Oh, well that's interesting. Uh, you mean things that are affecting us that we're... They're affecting us that we're not aware of. Yeah, well that, that's... Um, you've raised a whole interesting ball of, of something. Um, yeah, that sort of stuff that's happening. Uh, you know, I, I think that the way that that becomes pertinent here is if we're hearing it unconsciously or subconsciously, we're hard pressed to be aware of it in terms of the it. But how do we feel when we hear something subconsciously? We might begin to get anxious. We're learning to pay attention to. Um, so listening to those things and how we practice. Well, and because with some instances you can't even hear it or you're not even aware of it. What you can, though, is you can become aware that you don't even know what it was that initially caused it, but now you're feeling anxious. And then if you go, you go, oh, there's a TV on. Oh, and you begin to make connections, right? And so, yeah, so it's a very, yeah, very interesting. Okay. All right, so then day four, the time goes up, but now when we sit, what do we, after we then go through the posture and the breath and the clouds and the sun and now, and by the way, all of that's a minute or two or three, depends on how slow you go. Then we get to the practice proper. And what are we going to pay attention to for that practice? Which is what? Listening. Listening. So you just, if you're outside, it's like you're, not, you're, you're not listening for a bird, right? You, 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 know, you might hear one and go, oh, that's good, but you're right, you're listening. Okay, good. Then on the next day, we'll do that again, and there's a little bit more on listening that you can read which is touching on what we've already talked about. So you can raise this nicely. It says, when you're truly listening to sounds, whether they are a bird, traffic, or someone talking, you can also hear the more subtle things, things like the body sensations and impulses, thoughts and judgments, feelings and moods. And when you do, keep listening. Right? That, that staying with. Uh, it's really wonderful to be aware that we're angry, or aware that we're stressed, or aware that we're anxious as opposed to just being ang angry, stressed, or anxious, right? It'd be nice not to be feeling that in the first place, but better to be aware not. than not aware. Who knows what we do when we're not aware? We're screaming and we're turning away from something, whatever, or whatever it is that we do. But when we're aware, we now have a little bit more agency. And the first practice, the practice of mindfulness, doesn't necessarily tell us what to do, but it equips us to be in a better place to make those decisions. And it begins by coming back to and paying attention. Okay, good. And then, um, we, we listen, so here it is, the bird and the, on, on day six, we listen to our thoughts, right? So that goes back to what you were speaking to, and it's toward the end here, but because it really is advanced, it's a more, but you were listening, but we're specifically listening to the thoughts or things that might be arising. Okay. And then, 
On the last day, you decide what you want that under the sun to be, and you write that in. Okay, so that is the practices for the week.